discussion on the economics of homesteading. You may find that interesting. I don't know. Some of you not, but see, I'm looking at the world today and what I see coming around the corner, I call it the 800 pound gorilla outside the door, really doesn't look very good economically. It doesn't. You know, we can toss statistics around out there, but let's just say it's real simple, huh? You know, so many people are out of work. Um, so much, of, so many of us will not go back to work. Oh, I saw a projection the other day that said we could lose 46% of the jobs in the U.S. because of this virus. That's possible. I know uh, uh, United Airlines just came forward and said that as of October, you know, they got their loan money with the guarantee to keep the employees on. Shut up, frog. <laughs> and uh, they say by October they're going to be laying off 36,000 employees. Um, the other airlines will begin to follow. I mean, travel is just, pff, it's not what it once was. Most of the hospitality and the recreational stuff, you know. Here in Hawaii, the economy on Oahu is probably based almost 60% on tourism. Here on the big island, it's probably closer to a reverse. We're probably 40, 60. Uh, I think we have 60% of our economy is probably based in fishing, farming, construction, uh, astronomy and a bunch of other stuff uh, but we have plenty of tourism here too uh, it's a little different you know we don't have so many of the giant hotels and the beautiful beaches like they have in Oahu we have more uh, you know bed and breakfasts uh, vacation rentals and a whole lot more ecotourism you want to come see the volcano you know you want to come visit the, the green garden guys farm you know this that kind of stuff here um, coffee farms you know yeah so it's not looking good um now you know when in the u.s mainland we have so much more essential manufacturing right and essential food production and so on these jobs are problematic right now because of the disease but they will be coming back if the entire world economy does not collapse into a heap of rubble around our knees before this is over, those jobs are coming back. You know, there's going to be Ford motor cars. There's going to be stuff made by Apple, you know, on and on. This, the, that manufacturing is going to continue somehow or another, um, although it's probably going to be at a reduced rate because if we have so much unemployment, nobody's got money to buy stuff. You know, I, I love Elon Musk's quote there with Joe Rogan. Uh, <laughs> Musk was angry about uh, California closing his Fremont auto plant on him uh, because of the disease. And Musk says, if you want stuff, you got to make stuff. <laughs> and and I, I'm seeing it. I mean, you know, I just bought myself a, a, a steel guitar, for instance, you know, lap steel. And... Uh, I realized that the the company that manufactured the lap steel, they ain't making them right now because everybody's out with the virus. And so I actually ended up at the retail where I got mine. I, I got the last one. You know, there are a lot of things right now. You start looking at Amazon, you know, we see, oh, we have one in stock, two in stock. And if you go from there over to the people to make the stuff, a lot of times what you're going to see, it ain't being made. I burned out the coil in the uh, stove, in our baking stove here. Uh, we have an electric stove because I've got full electric on the roof, and so we cook with the sun. But the baking coil burned up a while ago, so I said, I, I don't like that stove anyway. I'm going to buy a really nice, fancy one, right? So we go down to town. First place we show up is Sears. Hey, guess what? Sears is sold out of every stove that they have in Hawaii, with the exception of one that costs $3,000. <laughs> huh? Yeah, and they and they can order them, but you can wait, you know, six to twelve months till the virus is over because they're not making the stoves on the mainland. Um, and then I went to Home Depot. Same thing. They said, "Hey, Sears sold out. They come over here. They bought everything we had. They had a few crummy stoves over there uh, and a couple very expensive ones that they could have helped us with, but they weren't what I wanted. And so, uh, basically, right now, I can't even buy a new stove uh, and get it here." No matter whether I order it or not, it doesn't matter. Uh, they're just not there. Warehouses are out. 
some of the factories that make the stoves are closed or you know operating on limited schedules and so on so we're really at a situation here um as far as that goes you want stuff you're gonna make stuff and uh well and you gotta have money to pay for stuff and right now that 800 pound gorilla is outside the doorway that i i can hear him breathing down my neck um we have moratoriums on rent and we have moratoriums on home mortgages going on right now keeping people in their houses while they're out of work and sick maybe but they end soon most of it by the end of the month is expired uh, some of it may be re-upped i don't know but you can't go on like that forever you owe money to the bank or you owe money to the landlord it's gotta go you know <laughs> so they're gonna get their stuff and basically what they're going to end up with is if you're part of the 46% that lost your job in this process, you lost your house too. And so we have really a potentially huge amount of homeless people waiting just around the corner in the United States. I keep telling my brother that this whole thing is going to make 2008 look like a, a Baptist Sunday social uh, for real. Yeah, this is nothing to laugh about. And I think personally where most of our minds are at, if we have one left after the virus took it from us, where our minds are at right now, you know, we may feel it's important, but compared to what you got coming at you, why well, nothing. You go tear down your statues, have fun, because <laughs> we're going to pay a price here real soon, real soon. You can't go on like this, you know can't keep cranking money off of printing presses to try to support a country and so on and so forth so if i got my statistics correct and you know the statisticians are always jumping on bill as we know you know statistics are absolutely the best way to 100 percent accurately tell a lie that's absolutely false and prove that it's really true <laughs> yeah but if you can believe um statistical evidence out there it, it is definitely looking like we are heading into some very very dark times um, they indirectly have nothing to do with politics they have nothing to do with social change indirectly it's got nothing to do with uh, uh, with virus it has to do directly with our way of life and our economy I mean, we spend too much time focusing on the wrong areas right now. So I feel sorry for you folks. I mean, I'm in a very good situation, although I am also in the matrix with the rest of you. And so you can't start suffering without me suffering too. I own my farm. I own all my cars. I own everything. I don't owe any money to anybody. And I have set my economy up so I have steady streams of money that have been funneling into my coffers. And that includes throughout the coronavirus. Um, lately, I'm beginning to feel like I'm more part of the 1% than I am with the rest of the U.S. Because I had modeled my economy after the way small nations operate theirs and after the way most American wealthy also operate their economies and when i made that transition what happened here once covid set in is i'm making money <sighs> i'm making money hand over fist on this thing because i just happened to have accidentally put myself in the same place with the one percent that are benefiting from this disaster i don't necessarily like that but on the other hand i much prefer it to sitting around biting my fingernails and thinking that my personal world's going to end. Uh, but it wasn't my plan, I'll tell you that, uh, to be in that kind of a situation to where people are out of work, people are suffering, people are sick, and I'm making money off of it. I mean, well, for instance, I own 3M, at least, you know, a portion of it. What does 3M make? Haha, <laughs> masks, you know, and, and a whole lot of other stuff we use in hospitals. I'm invested in a lot of hospital stuff and so on. So, and I'm also invested in a whole lot of digital online retailing um, and also in uh, digital connectedness, you know, for the, the social thing, you know, Skype and all that sort of thing. And so my money has been laid in places that just happened right now. 
once this broke out, whew, um, I'm not losing, I'm winning. The only loser I have in my entire portfolio is Ford. Um, and Ford's busy, they're working, they reopened, and it's a car company, and they'll eventually make cars again. Um, that was the only faux pas for Bill. They had such an incredible dividend that was floating between 6 and 10% roughly for the longest time, and, and Ford CEO said, no, he wasn't going to take it off unless uh, we had the next worldwide recession. Well, <laughs> Bill didn't sell Ford fast enough when COVID hit, so I'm sitting with it. It'll come up. Anyway, he pulled the dividend off, and so now it's just another stock selling at 6 bucks a share. So, let's talk about the economics of homesteading, though. Because what I see is our world will change. It's probably going to change permanently. For some of us, it will change for the better. Then as the later 60s came around and we started to have a back-to-the-land movement and the whole organic movement and all this stuff come about, I, I was definitely pulled into it. And uh, so actually I put myself back to avert poverty again <laughs> by buying a farm in Wisconsin and uh, then, you know, trying to homestead it. And, uh, well, I guess I've had worse ideas in my life. And I, this was the, the typical stuff, right? Where you get yourself 40 acres, you know, you, you know put in a well originally I just pumped water out of a spring actually with a, with a gas lawnmower engine on a centrifugal pump uh, to get water at the place um, you know we built a six-sided cabin out of recycled boards from taking down barns and granaries and things like this in the neighborhood and um, planted great big gardens had an outhouse yeah, I don't miss the experience of going out at 40 below zero in January and having to take a crap in that thing. Holy smoke. <laughs> yeah, take your gloves and put them on the seat under your butt so it didn't stick. Yeah, yeah. so basically I put myself back to poverty all over again with the rest of the folks that went to the back to the land movement at that time. Uh, you know, and folks thought, well, you know, we're going to grow our own food. We're going to share with the neighbors. You know, we're going to create co-ops and all that. We did. You know, a lot of it was successful. A lot of it was really the, the very beginning of uh, the widespread organic food, health foods in the United States. Uh, it was the beginning of a lot of food co-ops and things. So a lot of good stuff came out of it. And there was also a whole heck of a lot of it that was just too flaky and it fell apart. Um, you know, my attitude towards all of it is that this is a capitalistic society. If you want to survive well in a capitalistic society, you've got to learn to be a good capitalist. I mean, there's a whole lot of you out there who want to be socialists that, that aren't going to agree with me, I suppose. They argue all day long. And, uh, I mean, there are points in favor of... Uh, you know, some socialistic programs, too. I wouldn't want to be without the fire department, thank you, and that is socialism. Um, but truth is, is that it's a capitalistic society. You figure out how to play that game and play it well, you're not going to have to worry in this nation. That's my situation. There was a point, finally, in life where I said, okay, forget it. I, I, I cannot escape this economy. I cannot escape from the society and government, which was something I was actually trying to do, I was trying to isolate myself. And I realized I'm not an island. I'm not a rock. Um, and so I exist in the matrix with everything else here. And so uh, engaging it was the only solution from my point of view. All right, you take the economy, you take the society, and you engage it. I know most of my friends are so sick and tired of listening to me talk about stuff. I don't hardly have any friends anymore because I spend most of my time engaging what I see out there. That tires people out. You know, I know it does. Tough. Yeah. I think most of my relatives, kids particularly, are sick and tired of me kind of leaning on them, telling them, hey, you know, get with the program, man. 
Start to invest in this capitalistic society and start to make some money on it so you don't have to be underneath the weight of it so you're up here on the top of it gaining the benefits. I mean, this is really the difference. If you decide to try to escape from it, you're putting yourself underneath and you will be crushed by the weight of the economy and the social structure. If you decide to engage it hands-on, like your arm wrestling, and you use your brain, if you got any of it left after the virus, to be able to think up, okay, what's the best way for me to be able to create a sustainable economic base? You know, when, uh, when you've actually reached that point, you're making progress, I think, because um, any good idea in this nation is good for making plenty of money. And the more money you can make off of your ideas, the easier it is for you to sustain yourself. Now, we're looking at a society now that may have some interesting opportunities. There will be some new stuff coming at us. I don't know what it is yet, uh, but there will be. The world's going to be changing with all of this. And so there will be opportunities for people who are savvy. Um, there will be a, lot, a whole lot of the other old opportunities that were always around. I mean, as for me, I find that, you know, selling my seeds... <laughs> It's actually been good during the COVID. Why? Because people are worried about food. And so I happen to be in a fairly good situation. And so when we, we look at, you know, homesteading and buying land in Hawaii or wherever you're looking at doing it and thinking about maybe trying to create a more sustainable life around you and your family. Now, this is good stuff. That's the way I see it. Because if everybody, if every each and every one of us began to create a more sustainable setting economically for each and every one of us, the entire nation would be more stable. That is where we came from as a people. There was a time where we basically kind of took care of most of our own needs in this nation. <clears throat> and so... We've been moving further and further and further and further away from that to the point where people become so incredibly dependent as any supply chain begins to break down. Oh, man, we're in trouble. You know, um, here we're having trouble with uh, Young Brothers ship, and they dropped a whole bunch of containers in the ocean the other day, and then the uh, uh, government here is arguing with them about whether they get some of this money or not from the federal government, you know. And so there's this thing going on. Well, I'll tell you what. Whether it's Young Brothers, whoever it is that ships stuff in here to Hawaii, we're screwed if somebody stops bringing boats in here. I mean, I could remain alive, but, you know, eventually all the auto parts would break down, so we'll be walking or riding a horse again, you know. Eventually all the Levi's will dissolve on our bodies. My overhauls will fall off. There'll be nothing left but the straps and the buttons, and I'll be walking around in grass skirts, you know. So that is a future without transportation into Hawaii, that's for sure. Go back to the old days. Is that good? And no, I, I don't think it is. I, I grew up in a high-tech society. I like it. I get the benefits of it. All of this is so much about how can you bring the benefits out of what you see, what you have in front of you. You have so much at your disposal here in this nation today. Most of us don't take advantage of it. We really don't, you know. Um, so in the economics of homesteading, I think it's, a, it's partially valuable in the idea of, of, say, networking with other neighbors who are in the mindset. A neighbor over here raises chickens, for instance, you know. Uh, one of my friends is talking about bringing in beef cows on the uh, uh, on the Ford he just picked up, and oh, I immediately spoke up and said, "I'll buy half a steer off you, Joe." <laughs> yeah, and and for sure I will. Uh, and so there are ways and all this that so we can network the things that we have, you know. And uh, one guy's got this stuff, one guy's got that stuff, and so on. And uh, that does make it a lot easier to do this, but. You know, some things like, for instance, rice. Rice is just not a crop for Hawaii. Uh, we don't have the soils for it. We don't have hardly any conditions whatsoever that will grow uh, enough rice for the desire to eat it here in Hawaii. We have more rice, I think, than we eat any other carb on this island. 
and we essentially need California's delta to be able to supply enough rice to this island. And so without California growing and shipping rice in here, we're going to be eating a lot more taro. <laughs> you know, well, it's edible, right? But is it what you want? No, probably not. And so the this idea that things will have to move around and there will have to be some money involved in all of this. I think this is valid, and the more money that's involved in it in each and every individual pocket, the easier it is for all of us to be able to work through this. Um, and so let's just say Bill is Belgium. Okay, so my economy... I'm going to run my economy and my business here within the society of the United States just the same way Belgium sits within the EU. Okay, so I'm not separated. I'm kind of an island in the middle of it here. But Belgium generally is not going to go to uh, to France and go, Hey, France, uh, uh, we're broke. You got anything? You got a job? You know, it's not usually going to happen. Uh, might make loans between governments and things like this. But in general, the government's responsible for managing its own affairs economically um, within the midst of the economic union that they belong in. And so, case here, me as a person, I don't go out there and go, oh, do you have work? Can you give me work, sir? You're putting yourself in the wrong end of the equation as soon as you put yourself in that situation. And so, you know, if you intend to homestead, that's not where you want to be. Uh, you need to be able to look at this and say, all right, A, how can I acquire property that I can use for this project without having to create huge debts on my back? Because if you don't already own that land, this upcoming future time here, could be a really difficult time to get your hands on it if you have to borrow the money. So you may want to look at more creative solutions on how you can get yourself set down on a piece of land if you don't already own it. If you do own it, you're in good shape. If you own it but you have a loan on it, I would probably do what I could to see how I can get that cleared. Makes a lot of difference. It really does. And this is where then investing comes in because investing is exactly how I paid for this property. It's exactly how I built this house. It's exactly why we're running full photovoltaics here. It's why I have an electric car that's being charged by the sun and so on. That it, it, It's investment that causes that. I didn't work for that stuff. Now, it doesn't mean that I'm not busy. I'm always busy, and I'm always doing stuff, and a whole lot of what I do makes me money, right? But that isn't how I got all this. This was gotten by investing, and it was by taking a certain amount of money that I had that I did make by working, <laughs> damn fool, and looking around and going, hmm, where can I put this that it's going to grow? Now, you need to have some of it in a bank, right? you got to pay your bills, and you need a place where money can rapidly be liquidated and moved. So some of it's got to stay there, so you got to save a little bit on the side that way, but you're not going to make any money in that spot. And so the money needs to increase, not only just to keep um, up with the uh, inflation and the economy, but you can take the money and you make the money make money so that that wad of money makes it so you don't ever have to worry about making money again. <laughs> That's how it works. And if it's invested properly and you keep monitoring investments, you will find that um, you don't have to worry about it anymore. I don't. That's... <laughs> Concern over money is, oh, that's silliness. Uh, it, it really is. I, I'm sorry to say that in the face of the conditions we have here currently. You know, in my, my situation, we'll also drop as the rest of yours is dropping too. But the bottom's not going to fall out of it. No, the bottom will maintain. And we're going to stay here doing what we're doing. You know, probably won't be going out to dinner as much. 
Well, I probably won't be buying as much expensive beer, you know. There'll be a few things that are going to change. Um, I might not replace my overalls as often, but we'll be fine. Yeah. Now, right now, if I was to look into the future and say, well, what do we need? Well, we definitely need um, a safe and secure food supply. We definitely need most of our major manufacturers of goods. We need more digital interconnectedness because of the separation we're experiencing. And so, you know, things like Microsoft, things like, uh, um, well, there are uh, funds out there, for instance, that uh, exchange trade uh, digital stocks. Uh, XLK was one I picked up a while ago on a suggestion of a friend. It's been very good. Yeah, it's been very good. Um, it's way out there right now. But with the 1% making a killing on this, believe me, there are people right now who are making money hand over fist so fast on this disaster. It ain't funny. And those people will be utilizing space tourism. And so space tourism is, even now, still a very good investment at the moment. It may not pay out for a long time, and a lot of it's still private. But what you can get into, it's worthwhile. You know, the uh, digital retailing, digital retailing has been hotter than a pistol in the midst of all of this. And anything that has to do with digital retailing, um, as long as they aren't too heavily exposed to conventional brick and mortar retailing, has been thriving. You know, uh, Jeff Bezos and Amazon, it, Bezos is making me a rich man. I am so glad that in 2008, I put a lot of money on his company when it hit the bottom. This is a factor, contrarian investing. It is coming at us, people. There will come a day, I don't know when, but there's going to be a day that the guys on Wall Street are going to look at all this and go, it ain't coming back the way it used to be. And so they'll be in selling, and they'll sell the floor out. It's got to happen. It has to. The world situation right now is miserable, and the stock market is glorious. That cannot continue forever. And so when the manure hits the barn fan on Wall Street, people begin selling like crazy, and they may sell worse than I have ever seen. This probably could be worse than 2008. It could be. Anyway... It's a matter, really, of being ready at that point. Because unless the world economy actually does completely tank, and it's elephants in the streets again, and we're all dead, and it's over, unless we see that kind of day, most likely, eventually, money that you put on good companies during the big tank, when it falls, eventually you're going to find that that money made you a rich person. It was money that I bothered and chanced. I was shaken when I did it, that I put it on, on big companies in 08. When it hit the bottom, everybody jumping out of the windows, I went in and I bought stuff for pennies. I really, I mean, I just, I bought some of the best companies on the planet for next to nothing because people panicked. And well, today, God, I'm so glad. I'm so, I mean, uh, I, at this point, I believe now I'm well over 4,000% growth in my Amazon stock, for instance, you know, because of that. Google's the same situation. The, all these nice digital and digital retailing companies have been just sweeter than they'll get out. Um, and they're good now again, too. They, they were good from here to there, and now they're happening all over again, you know. But the bottom will be hit. It's going to happen. Um, you know, my plan has been that I have sold some of my weaker issues. I've sold things that I made a lot of money on and so on. And I piled up cash. I have cash sitting. And if it gets any worse, I'm going to convert the cash to gold, whiskey, and bullets. Okay. But for right now, I'm maintaining cash. And if and when it hits, I'm going to go shopping. Yeah. 
Yeah, and I'll you know I'll be and I'll probably be putting money in most of the major blue chips that we uh, that w we can pretty much count on surviving this. Um, I'll probably buy it even more Amazon all over again. You know, be a lot of things. I'll have to think it over what my strategy is going to be. I haven't worked that out yet. But when it happens and the world crashes, because it is going to happen. This is a, I mean, it's inevitable. I'm not being negative here. This has to come down. Uh, there's no way it can sustain. And so when it happens, if you have enough cash to get out there and start picking up everything that everybody else threw away, over time, give it 10 years, you'll be one rich fool. I'll tell you, you will be. Yeah, but you have to get past your angst. And I know most homesteader guys who want to go back to the land and grow food forests and stuff. Oh, you know, some of you are just, uh, you know, fruit fanatics. You, you really, really like that kind of stuff. But a whole lot more you are more um, sort of hippie-minded socialistic or something on this order. You're, um, you're looking to create an alternative type of um, a living situation within our economy. And I think you're doing a good thing with that, but I am definitely strongly encouraging you, even though all of my life, most of the younger people that I say this to have gone, oh, no, 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 Bill, no, no, capitalism's evil. It's evil. I mean, I, I get that constantly. All right. Well, I'm telling you what, if you want freedom in our nation today, and if you want freedom in the coming world, you better figure out how to become a real good capitalist. Because if you have money circulating in your economy and others don't, you get the power. You get to buy everything they lost. That's what it boils down to. And, uh, you know, you get out there on your 40 and you're going to grow corn to survive on. You know, I'm telling you, having a brand new John Deere to ride around on, you know, with a, uh, with a player that's going to do Willie Nelson for you. Absolutely. It beats the heck out of being out there behind a water buffalo with a plow made out of wood. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's... Uh, Having the technological advantages of our world today, um, you know, I am a guy who lives in nature and I eat my own food and grow most of my own food. I live in a natural environment, okay, and I don't owe anything to anybody, but yet I engage our technological world and I use all of its aspects too. And without money, you can't have that good part of our economy and society. And money will be in short supply soon. Because no trabajo, senor. No dinero. You gotta work if you want money somehow or another. Or you learn to invest. Aloha. Hang loose. Y'all have a good time. Be careful. And, and really, it looks like the COVID can take away your thought process, okay? It really looks that way. I'm not out of my mind here. I got science behind me. I know, nobody believes scientists anymore, but I do, and I have science behind me on this now. It's starting to come to the surface. And even if you think you can survive the thing, you know, and all that, you may survive it with only half a brain. And, oh, dude, I just don't want to deal with comments from you that are like, Bill, what's a grape? Yeah, that's... <laughs> we already live in a dumb enough world. <laughs>